If you set your mind to doing something, nothing's impossible, everything's possible. You could have whatever you dream of, and if you keep continuing dreaming big, you will get there one day. You gotta have a lot of patience, dedication, and passion to build one of these cars. My first car was a 1963 Impala, which I had purchased in Bakersfield, it was a project car. The 63 Impala was a car that was unrestored. Uh, we took that car, stripped it all down, frame off restoration. We painted a candy blue with the pattern top. It was called Juice 63, which was featured in uh, a couple magazines. So what happened, when it got featured, I got contacted a couple months after the, the car got featured in the magazine, and they had offered me $40,000 for it. And I said, you know what, why not? It was something that I couldn't refuse. I said, you know what, it's your car. So it went to Japan. I love the cars. Since I was a kid, like I said, I've loved to see lowriders. There's different ways of building a lowrider. To me, it's an art. That's the beauty of lowriding. Uh, right now, I'm currently working on a 1963 Impala, a hardtop. I've had it for 17 years, and now I've had the opportunity to try to put it all together now. I want it all original GM factory parts, you know, all NOS parts, which is new old stock. It's gonna also have a whole bunch of accessories. This is a hard top. It also has a few more options that the convertible didn't come with. This car is gonna be fully loaded. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm calling the car is fully loaded. And uh, we should be done with this car within the next month. So they, when people see it out there, they'll appreciate it just as much as I am. I own a 1963 Impala Super Sport convertible. When I seen this car, it was a car that I just had to have. It was a car that was fully loaded with factory options. It's very rare to find a, a very option car out there. When I bought that car, I said, I'm gonna restore this car. But a lot of people say, no, leave it leave it alone. You know, don't, don't mess with it, which I, I agreed with them. I, I don't wanna just yet go into that full restoration on this car because, I mean, you can still smell the old of it, you know, when you're driving it. I mean, it drives so nice and it's just, it's real. I didn't put them on there. This car came with them already. It's an original Endurance Maroon with black interior, with a 327 engine, two-speed transmission, four-barrel carburetor, with fully option accessories, factory AC, a cruise control, four-way flasher, a tronic eye, tilt steering column, power windows, trunk release, tack meter, compass, vanity mirrors, under the dash ashtray, AM FM radio, padded dash, power steering, a power brakes, locking gas cap. It was something that you just don't see out there no more. When I was a young kid, there used to be a, a shop down the street from our house right there off of uh, Pacific and Walnut called the Gold Exchange. There used to be a guy there that used to work there. His name's Richard Silva. He went by Richie Rich. He was the number one hopper at the time. He was a champion for a lot of years. He would give us money to wash his cars, to clean the windows, and just keep all the neighbor, all the kids in the neighborhood off, uh, try to keep us off the street, teach us right from wrong, and, and talk about his cars and the rare stuff that he had on there. And that's how I got the passion of low riding. I come from a, a family of 11. We learned a lot from each other, you know. Uh, my mom, my dad, I mean, worked all their lives just to support us. My mom sometimes had to work two jobs day and night just to put food on her table and clothes on her back. They couldn't give us everything we wanted just because we were so, it was so many of us. My mom was uh, in the sewing business and uh, she used to work for factory uh, sewing and my dad was a janitor. It was tough, you know, once you get older, you kind of realize uh, what your parents did to try to provide for you. Uh, once I got older, if I wanted name brand clothes, I had to go work for them. And I found every little way of, of getting out there and, and hustling to try to make money. So when we did go back to school, I had money to buy the clothes that I wanted, you know? I went from collecting cans to selling raspados at the park, from buying stuff at the 99 cent store and, and selling it for more money. I'd buy baseball hats, you know? that they had one time at the 99 cent store and I bought a whole bunch of them for a dollar each and go sell them at the park for five bucks. I didn't go out there begging for money. I went out there and worked for my money. I was a collector, you know? I, I would collect baseball cards, Hot Wheels, 
action figures and stuff like that that I would go to the store and buy a couple of the ones I thought they were rare and then I was holding on to them because I figured one day I'm gonna I'm have a business you know where I could make money with this stuff you know and my dad told me if you graduate I'll help you on whatever you want to do that was his dream you know just to try to keep me out of trouble I was working for a guy at, at the Santa Fe Spring Swap Meet uh, which was selling the same things. I used to be a collector, you know, baseball cards, action figures, and stuff like that on the weekends. So I learned a lot from him. After I graduated from high school, I said, that's what I want to do. I want to have my own business. I want to have a, I want to sell sports cards and action figures and uh, collectibles. And I started at the Outdoor Swami doing that with a small booth, $500. That's what my dad, yeah, helped me out with 500 bucks. I mean, he didn't have much, but we made it grow as it went on and on and on and on, and it was just a weekly thing. Once that business grew, I, I got into the Compton Indoor. The business just got bigger and bigger as I was in there with more of the collectibles and stuff like that, baseball cards. I love toys, maybe because we didn't get to have them when we were kids. We went to a store and all we could do is, is, is look at them because we, our parents couldn't afford to buy them for us. And when I got to a point where I was already like in junior high and I was already making a little bit of money, I would go out there and buy it and save it and, and appraise, uh, you know, appreciate what I had and, 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 and praise it. And I was like, oh man, this is rare, this is good. You know, because I didn't get to have that when I was a kid. I'm the founder of Collector's Choice Toys and Hobbies. We're located here in the uh, city of Paramount, California. I started Collector's Choice back in 93 with a simple $500 investment to being one of the biggest distributors in the West Coast for toys. We're, we're a distributor and we're an importer, exporter of toys. We distribute toys like from Mattel, Revell, Funko, Jada, Maestro, McFarlane. Uh, we sell product to customers in Mexico, Australia, Spain, Japan, you name it, uh, worldwide. Once we opened all these doors, we were able to sell to a lot of mom and pop shops that were doing what I did when I first started. I love what I do and it keeps me motivated because it's fun. It's fun and I see that I could do more with it. Because my toy business was so successful, I was able to start DGATs with David Gonzalez, the creator of The Homies, which does all this artwork which caters to the Chicano industry. We do from uh, t-shirts to uh, seat covers from blankets, uh, you name it. There is a logo for the Lowrider Man, but there is nothing made for it. So I, I contacted Lowrider and asked if there was an opportunity to make this toy. So when I seen the opportunity to be able to license that, the figurine for this Lowrider Man, I asked Dave if he could design me the figurine and he was more than happy to do it because he's always had a passion for the brand, you know? He was very excited to, to design the figurine for us. Someone that doesn't get low ride and they're missing out. When I'm driving my cars, it's never bothered me what other people thought. Low riding is an art. And when I see people out there driving a low rider and it's nice and clean, you gotta give it to them because I know that it come easy. My advice to a lot of the people that are out there that are, are going through the hard struggle that I went through, nothing's impossible. And I encourage everybody that's out there to not give up. Everything's possible in life. And you could do whatever you accomplish yourself to do. Just keep moving forward, keep opening them doors. And once you get there, you're gonna see the light shine on you. My name's Cesar Lozano. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a lowrider role model.